Hey guys, it's Tyler here. I'm filming a video today to talk a little bit about albums, specifically in hip hop, a little bit in R&B here, and the concept of anticipation for those albums, and talking about non-traditional album drops. So, the first one that comes to mind when you think about this is obviously uh, a little while back we had that Beyonce album. We didn't even know Beyonce was planning on dropping an album. And then she drops this album late at night, puts it directly to iTunes without advertising it, without us knowing anything at all. And, uh, her and a couple of the production team and people started tweeting out about it and uh, iTunes had the big banner of it. And so it was kind of out of nowhere and that album uh, recently was up for album of the year uh, ended up losing to back which is another controversial thing but this album drop was a big deal because it showed the influence of Beyonce it showed her power that she had over the music industry and more specifically over the fans without any notice she can just drop a, an amazing album and it can sell incredibly well without any advertising because she didn't even put out any of the amazing singles from that album until the album had already dropped once people heard drunken love and partition and this new kind of more sexy side of beyonce uh, with more hip-hop influences and the beats and stuff it was a big deal people loved it and that album sold incredibly well it sold even better after the singles came out, but it was selling like gangbusters even before the singles dropped. I think this is a really important moment in music because Beyonce is kind of showing the industry, which in a lot of ways is kind of stuck in a rut. I mean, ever since Napster and then iTunes, I mean, the industry has been struggling. And I think Beyonce was flexing a little bit on the, on the sake of the artists. And then there's another artist who I think is super important when it comes to selling albums, and that's J. Cole. I know he's not the most popular rapper. He's not like as popular as a Drake or a Jay-Z, but he sold that album, his first album, uh, Cole World, The Sideline Story. Workout was kind of a big single, but it didn't get that big compared to Hit the first week sales of that album and I think the reason why was I think Cole has been vocal about this himself is that it was because of fans he had a rabid loyal fan base me included who went and bought the album because of they had heard his mixtapes before and they loved all his mixtapes going leading up to that and when he said he was gonna drop an album people were gonna buy that album regardless of a good single and that was really evident in J. Cole's latest release, 2014 Forest Hill Drive, because two weeks before the album came out, he said, I'm going to drop an album in two weeks. He didn't uh, release any singles. A little bit before the album came out, a couple days maybe even, he put out a short video of him riding a bike through Fayetteville, listening to his headphone and it had the music from um, the intro track, the Do You Wanna, Do You Wanna, Be Free, that song. It had that playing and him riding the bicycle and it was a really moody, atmospheric video and it got me more excited for the album than I already was. But he, who is not even the biggest name in rap, had a number one album without advertising and with two weeks notice. It was a big deal. You know, he had shown previously that you can sell albums without singles, and a, a, a rapper can sell an album without a single. And he also then just showed that it didn't even take that long to get people anticipating an album. And then we have things lately where Kendrick's album title, uh, album date leaked and then didn't end up coming out. Uh, but you're seeing these non-traditional releases and Drake's mixtape, uh, if you're reading this and you're too late, that whole thing was incre incredible buzz and was like on his blog for like an hour or something like that. And it's uh, it's doing pretty well uh, sales-wise. It's a little controversial whether or not you should have to pay for a quote mixtape, but 
Eight Scott 17 tracks, and they're all solid from what I've listened to so far. I've listened to it once, and I uh, I want to listen to it more, but it's an interesting time for uh, hip-hop releases, and I'm really curious to see what this means for people like Kendrick Lamar, who's going to be dropping this year, and what it means for Kanye, who's probably going to be dropping this year. But knowing Kanye, he might say he's dropping in November and then not drop until March of next year. Uh, that's just how he is sometimes. I'd rather him be late than give us like a subpar product. Anyway, so these are my thoughts about music, you know, atypical releases as they are lately. And I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of these atypical releases? And what do you think it means for the music industry? Uh, hit me up on Twitter. I'm uh, at Proof of Tyler. And you can comment here as well. Uh, like us on Facebook and subscribe, please. All right. Have a good day.